Okay guys, welcome back to the Daily Disciple channel. Today we're going to dig into evangelism. Now I know a lot of you have been asking kind of questions about, oh, practically, like, how do I go about sharing the gospel with somebody? What do I say? What if I forget? <laughs> you know, what if I make a mistake? How does this really work? Because we can talk about a lot of theoretical stuff about, oh, you should probably do this and do this and do this. But at the end of the day, it's really nice to see somebody in action and actually how to practically do it. And I want to encourage you to go out and share the gospel with people. So in order to do that, I thought we could do something fun today and look back at one of my witnessing encounters that I actually captured on camera. And um, this is a witnessing encounter from about a year and a half ago. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get into it. And um, yeah, I'll give my thoughts along the way. This is going to be fun. Okay, so what are your guys' names? Matt. Lexi. Megan. Okay, guys. Okay, now this is a quick thing. I know I'm stopping it right off the bat, but it is something I learned from somebody, uh, and you can see a lot of my witnessing kind of techniques come from Living Waters, The Way of the Master, uh, Ray Comfort's ministry, and he talks about the importance of getting the person's name if you're talking to a stranger initially, because then you're able to address them by their name. It adds that uh, personal touch. Um, and it's nice for you because you're not just like, hey, man, hey, girl, you know, you're like be able to address them by their name. And that really helps to build some um, some connection there early. So it's just a small thing, but it can help out all the way. So I have a question for you. Would you consider yourselves to be good people? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. The first question I ask is, would you consider yourself to be a good person? It's important it gets to the heart of the gospel real quick because the heart of the gospel is that Christ came to take our sins upon himself, die on the cross to give us new life and to pay that punishment for our sins. But if we don't understand our sin, if we think we're good people, then, then, the, then the cross doesn't make sense, right? So if I think I'm a good person and Christ somehow died for my sins. What sins? I'm a good guy, you know? It doesn't make sense. That's why I want to start off with saying, hey, do you think you're a good person and jump into God's law showing that, oh wait, they're not actually good people, right? They actually do need the cross. That's when the cross can make sense. So that's why I asked that question here. So that's based on your standard, right? We all have different standards of what, what's right and wrong, right? We're, we're better than the next guy or the next girl, right? Okay, what do you think about, what do you think compared to God's standard. Do you think God is a standard? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in the Bible, here I ask them, um, I, I ask questions related to God's standard, you know, God's standard of goodness, because as much as I want to ask them, hey, according to your standard, do you think you're a good person? I also want to point them to God's standard and saying that, oh, wait, according to God's standard, we're actually not good people. And that's what I'm going to go into right now. I don't know if you guys believe the Bible, that's fine, but in the Bible it says that God's standard is the Ten Commandments. Do you think you've kept the Ten Commandments? I don't think so. No, probably not. <laughs> okay, so one of the Ten Commandments is, have you ever lied? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, okay. <laughs> Now notice here, I, I didn't say you are a liar, like saying like, oh, well, you've definitely lied. I'm just asking questions. And that's what I really want to stress to you guys is a lot of what I'm doing here and what, and even when I make mistakes, you know, um, is I'm trying to ask questions because it's not about this kind of confrontational look of saying, look, you've sinned, you're going to hell, you got to do, you know, this kind of thing. It's about asking them questions. It's saying, oh, do you think you're a good person? Oh, do you think you've kept God's standard? And generally people are more receptive to that <laughs> than saying, uh, start accusing people of stuff. I'm not accusing them of anything, right? I'm asking them questions and that's going to help um, bring light to their sin, right? And they're bringing light to it. I'm just asking questions. Everyone, they kind of incorporate it to their everyday life, right? They tell little white lies. Oh, I can't be there because I'm at something and you know, you're not at anything. You just don't want to go. So people incorporate it in their lives. Have you ever hated someone? at somebody but not hated them. I've never really hated somebody, just not really, haven't really liked them so much. <laughs> okay, okay. So the Bible says that whoever hates his brother is a murderer. So you guys may or may not have hated someone. Okay. So have you ever disobeyed your parents? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, so most kids, if not all kids, have disobeyed their parents, okay? Have you ever guys taken the Lord's name in vain? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, so that's a really serious thing to God because it's His name, which is high and holy, and we're dragging it down to the dirt, right? Like we don't even care. 
We're not even saying, uh, a lot of people say, oh, I'm not even thinking about it when I say it. And that's part of the problem because we're not giving it the respect it deserves, right? Okay, so according to these things, we've all said we've, we've, you guys have broken the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah. 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 Be innocent or guilty of breaking the Ten Commandments. So this next question is important. Remember, I'm continuing to ask them questions. But after I've come to the end of asking them, have they broken these specific commandments, there needs to be some kind of understanding around them is saying, okay, well, you've committed these things, you've done these things. Would a person that does these things and you've done them, are you innocent or guilty of breaking God's law? And I, I don't know if you've seen my other witnessing encounter on this channel where I talk to a fellow and kind of bring in the analogy of the judge. And I think this is a really helpful analogy when we think about God's justice. God is a judge. And if we break his commandments, yeah, we are guilty and that's what these people are going to have to wrestle with here yeah, guilty. definitely guilty definitely guilty okay, yeah. so guilty okay so if you're guilty and if there is a place called hell where god punishes guilty people do you think you're you're going to go there uh probably i hope not <laughs> yeah i i hope not <laughs> Yeah, well, that's why we, none of us want to go to hell, right? The, we, we, why would we want to go to hell? A lot of people say, oh, they're dancing up in hell. They're partying with Satan. They're partying with Hitler. No, they're not. The Bible says that there's a torment and a destruction there for all eternity, which is scary. And it, a, lot, a lot of times doesn't make sense to people because they're like, why? It's forever. I just did this one bad thing, right? Well, I'm going to give you a little example of why hell is actually deserved why we actually deserve hell. If we were to lie to our parents, we might, you know, when you guys were younger, I think you're probably pretty independent now, but when you were younger, you would have gotten in trouble. You might have got grounded, right? If we lie to the police, woo wee, we're gonna get we're gonna get in a lot more trouble. If we lie to a judge, the penalty penalty is insurmountable, right? The crime didn't change, but who it was against did. Now when we commit a crime against God, the punishment is eternal. God is so high and so holy the punishment is forever. Now, does that scare any of you guys? Now, the reason that I asked this this next question, I gave that analogy, and I think that's a really helpful analogy. That analogy I first heard by um, an evangelist named Tony Miano. I'm not sure where he got it from, but that's where I heard it from him. I think it's a really helpful analogy that help can can help really bring some understanding to wait why 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 should we go to hell? We because there's so many things in our minds as uh, you know, for unbelievers that are like, wait a minute, I just did this little thing. I don't deserve it. But that analogy can really bring light to God's holiness and saying, you know what? It's not about necessarily the crime, but it's who it's committed against. And God is so high and holy that he has to punish sin infinitely. Now, the next question I asked was, does that scare you? And the reason I ask that question is because I want to get kind of a understanding of how they're processing this information. If they say, oh, it doesn't really bother me at all. I'm not really scared. Then I'd kind of go into, well, why not? Does do you not believe it's true? Why don't you believe it's true? And if it does, then that gives me the opportunity to bring in the gospel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if we're guilty and if God exists and if the Bible's right in saying that we all deserve hell, we'd all be heading there. Do you know what Jesus did so that we don't have to go to hell? So Jesus died, came to this earth to die on the cross, taking the punishment that we deserve. See, we broke God's law, but Jesus paid our fine in his life's blood. He rose again, and what we need to do is repent, which means turn from sin and trust in Jesus. Have you guys heard that before? Now notice when I went up to them, I didn't say, I didn't start the conversation and I just said, you know, do you know that Jesus loves you? For many people, that's their approach. And the reason that I don't do that is because by saying that, you're kind of confusing people. And honestly, you're not really giving them much to think about. Because if you simply say, Jesus loves you, they're like, okay, great, awesome. Another person that loves me and they move on with their lives. But what I want to convey to them is that they have sinned. And I do that by asking them questions. The bad news, yeah, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. But I also wanna say, look, there is hope despite the fact that, yeah, you have sinned, but Christ has come to save you from your sins. And that is how I want to um, really share the gospel with his pe with people is bringing the bad news and also bringing the good news. You can see I'm not the most eloquent guy. This doesn't take a lot of 
you know, eloquence of speech or you don't need to be a great communicator, but it's about understanding the foundations of the gospel, the good news of Christ. And that's why I want to kind of bring it to sin, first of all, and then the gospel so the gospel actually makes sense. So what is keeping you today from trusting in Jesus? A lot of times, a lot of times with the younger people, it can be one of these things where they think they're going to live forever, right? I'm free now, I want to party now, I want to have fun, right? I don't want any morals, I don't want any of that kind of thing. I try to be a good person, I'm better than the next guy. The Bible says that no one is good, no one seeks after God, and no one knows their time. God can pick us up at any point, our lives could end. Now I want to kind of insert some urgency because there should be some urgency in this decision because if you guys are right in saying that you deserve hell for your sins against God and if God exists then you really need to think about this don't you yep. now I would just I plead with you guys today please look over the facts look at your sin before holy God and repent and trust in Jesus Christ alone because he's the only substitute a lot of people say I'm, I'll be a good person I'll change my ways the Bible says that no changing of ways, no walking old ladies across the street an insurmountable number of times can erase the sin that we've committed against God. And that's why Jesus took that punishment upon himself. Now, I would so encourage you guys, please think over this. I know you guys are having a great time hunting some Pokemon, and that's really great. Hope you guys continue to have a good time, but think about these things. And I really appreciate talking to you guys. Thanks so much. Okay, guys. That was my witnessing encounter with these three, um, you know, really nice and genuine. I think they're probably tw 20 somethings. Yeah, for a little bit of backstory. At the time, Pokemon Go was very popular. So, um, yeah, so we were out there went talking to people and there was just quite a people, quite a bit, few people hunting Pokemon out there with their phone. So that's kind of funny. But God uses those things to draw these people out, out of their houses to hunt Pokemon and to hear the gospel. Part of what I did at the end there was I asked him, what is keeping you from trusting in Christ today? And notice I didn't try to get them to say the sinner's prayer with me right there because I'm not asking, I don't want them to just say a prayer. I want their heart to be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to insert some urgency in their hearts um, through what they just heard, the truth of God that they just heard, the fact that they, yes, they are guilty of sin and that they do deserve hell. They admitted that. And the fact that they admitted that, they'll carry that with them. And that God's going to continue to use that to stir in their hearts. Yeah, I do deserve hell. But then they'll be able to see the cross and the fact that, oh, Christ did take my punishment on himself. Now, I'm not going to say that how I shared the gospel was perfect. It wasn't. Could I have said a lot of other things? Yeah. Could I have approached it differently? Yeah. Could I have quoted more Bible verses and brought more of that into it? Yeah, of course I could. But, you know, at the time, I was just like, this is what I got. I'm just here for you, God. This is, And this is how I approach a lot of my life is saying, you know what? I've been able to read. I've been able to learn. I've been able to listen. God's been able to impart his wisdom within me, at least a small amount. I'm going to use that for him where I am. I'm not going to wait and try to like gather more of it and make excuses about, oh, I'm not ready. Well, you know what? God, you are more prepared than you think you are. God has the, if you are saved by the blood of Christ, you understand at least the basics, the foundations of the gospel. And if you understand that, then the likelihood is with a little bit of practice, you can start conveying that to other people. Sin. Yeah, we've sinned against a holy and just God. Because of that, we deserve hell. But Christ came to this earth, fully God and fully man, to die on the cross, to take the punishment that he did not deserve, but we deserve. And he rose again on the third day. And if we trust in Christ and repent for our sins, we'll be saved, not because we did something good, not because we were walk old ladies across the street, but because Christ he took that punishment for us. Boy, I can I remember every time I've shared the gospel with somebody, the only emotion that I'm experiencing after, it's not, oh, I should have said this, it's not, I should have said that, it's just joy. It's just like, wow, I'm thankful that I was able to be a part of that. Because at the end of the day, it's not about saying everything right. It's not about bringing with the exact right tactics and methodologies and understanding uh, intricacies of apologetical uh, apologetic argument. It's about bringing what we have, scriptural truth, 
um, the gospel and the Holy Spirit that dwells within us and just speaking and having a conversation with somebody else. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a like down below. If you're new here, subscribe and leave a comment down below. I'd love to chat with you if you have any questions about evangelism. Thanks so much, guys, and um, I'll see you next video. Bye, guys.